go ahead and call this meeting to order. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Today is Tuesday, March the 21st, 2021. Uh, I now call the San Juan Economic Development Corporation meeting to order, which was scheduled at 5.30 uh, via video conference. Uh, first item on the agenda is our Pledge of Allegiance. We'll all rise for the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item on the agenda is our roll call. I'll begin with the room there. I see Lenny there and Mr. Villegas. Thanks, Sanchez, Vice President. Marco Villegas, Commissioner. Ben Arjona, EDC Executive Director. Rico Garcia, Attorney. Martha Patterson, Administrator Assistant. Bob Garza, President. Very good, and Arturo Guajardo, Jr., present. Israel Garza, present. And Israel Garza. Thank you all for joining us. Our next item is our public comments. Do we have anybody signed up for public comments today, Mr. Arjona? No, sir, there were no public comments. No public comments. Okay, now we'll move on to item five, which is our director's report. Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, thank you for attending this meeting. Uh, I, I would like to maybe on this, uh, there's five items that uh, I'd like to uh, place on or that discuss a little bit further, but one of the items is on the commercial virtual tour with the RGV. I'd like to maybe start off with that one since we have Mr. Sergio Contreras and Ms. Marie Garza here with us. Uh, I want to thank Mr. Contreras for being with us as well as Ms. Marie, but I know that the Mr. Contreras was supposed to be on the road and uh, he made the huge effort being here with us. This is a very important thing that we're looking and working with the, uh, with the, RG, with the EDC, in partnership with, with, the, uh, EDC, with the RGV as well. Uh, one of the things that we talked about is a virtual tour. And pretty much what this is, is promoting the city, uh, the accomplishments, what do we have to offer. And uh, Ms. Marie and I spoke about uh, how soon we could maybe launch a video, which is a virtual tour. And the, the option was either April the 1st or sometime in June or July. So the way that we are, we always want to tackle the things right off the bat. And we decided to do it April the 1st. However, because of the cold uh, time that we just spent uh, last week, uh, it, it was pushed a couple of weeks. So it'll be like the second week in April. We have already met with staff, uh, the marketing guys as well. So they're working on a nice little package for, for us to display and to virtually uh, do a tour later. So during during that time, so we have I have uh, Mr. Sergio Contreras, Ms. Marie Garcia here with us, and they can explain to us a little bit more on that uh, on this virtual tour. Mr. Contreras or Ms. Marie. Thank you for that, uh, Mr. Arjona, to Mr. Chairman and uh, Board of Directors. Thank you for allowing us uh, time to present to you. I'm Sergio Contreras for the record with the RGB Partnership. Uh, over the years, we've uh, we've engaged in the conversation of showcasing our communities, uh, showcasing our, our EDCs, so that they can have an opportunity to speak on the latest and greatest, what's happening in your community, uh, in a sense of economic development, and then also allow you an opportunity to speak on uh, providing an update to the community in the sense of, hey, we've got a, a planning and zoning department, or we've got a one-stop shop business permit, or we're going to invest, or we have already invested in water infrastructure, or we're expanding XYZ roads to drive more investment. Uh, historically, we've done these in person. I think we started right about uh, October of this past year. We decided to move them virtually. Uh, and, and so we'll be doing these virtually and then come back to you uh, and host one in person as we begin to do more in person. Uh, uh, at our webinars, the audience that we reach, we get maybe between 40 to 60 individuals that may attend our webinars. And it's usually real estate brokers, investors, or bankers that want to get to know more your community. Uh, and then we also have, and there's no charge for this. So, so it's something that we do because we have a working relationship with you already. So, so there's no, no expense for you at all. Now, <clears throat> what it will take from you is to prepare the presentation, and you can do it however you like. 
the way that others have done it is they'll come, they'll, they'll come like this and they'll speak on, on provide an update on something. Uh, and then others create a PowerPoint and they navigate us through five or 10 slides and say, this is the Northern part, or this is a park that we're producing, or this is the new development next to the HEB, or this is where we've got new water infrastructure. Or you can do a video. Some people do a video and it's, you have somebody that greets, whether it's a manager or someone uh, greets the, the folks, and then you take them through that. Presentation can be 20, 30 minutes, and then we open it up for Q&A. Um, and then what we do also is we have a working relationship with the Rio Grande Guardian, which is Steve Taylor. Uh, with that working relationship is he on. So after we finish with your presentation, he will then do two stories. Uh, two stories, two articles of what he heard, and then he'll put it out there to, to all his individuals, wow. to all his audience. Again, we do this already at, at, at no cost to you. It's part of what we're supposed to do as an organization to create awareness of how our region is growing, and, and we like to focus in some fun. If you feel that March is not a time that you might be ready, just let us know. Uh, we want to make sure that you feel 100% ready for it, uh, uh, and Marie, who's part of the uh, with Sames Engineering, she's she's pretty much the lead when it comes to in, in when we brought this idea to us back in 2019. We did several in person, and then now uh, uh, virtually. So Marie, if you want to chime in on, on what, and why we're doing this and what others have done. Okay, thank you, Sergio. Thank you. EDC for inviting us to present today. I don't want to repeat Sergio, but it is a, a, I just wanted to add that it is a unique way to showcase your city. We know each city here in the Rio Grande Valley represents different um, unique areas or unique investment opportunities. So this is just a way for us to all collaborate in the industry. Um, I know that Sergio mentioned March, but we have you down for April. Okay. So I know we spoke this morning and we, um, Mr. Hona, we um, agreed that maybe April 15th will work for you all. And so that'll be good. But I mean, it's still flexible. You can just change the date, um, contacting me or Sergio. But it is a fun, unique way. I can't wait till we do it in person. But it, meanwhile, we will do it virtually. And we're here to help in, in any possible way that we can. So again, thank you for um, allowing us to present and we can't wait to showcase your beautiful city. Yeah, thank you. So, so Sergio, if I may ask, who gets to see this or who do we present this to or do they go on a website? Or? Yes, so the way that it works is, so for example, you, you, we invite our, the folks that, that typically attend are either investors, uh, real estate brokers, uh, bankers, uh, as and they're the ones that typically are the ones that, that join us. Also, oh, perfect. So you bring an audience with you. Yeah, we bring an audience. Yeah. Oh, you no, no. Okay. Yeah. So you usually get between 30 and 50, 60 people that join us. Nice. Um, and then what, what people like to hear also, uh, uh, Mr. Sherman, is if you have upcoming projects, road expansion, infrastructure development, we also get folks that are like that are in the business of do, uh, of doing conducting business with municipalities. So they also like to listen to these because they say, "Hey, you know what? I might be able to do some work," and that helps us promote local investment, doing business with locals. Uh, after after it's done, then Steve Taylor will do two stories on you, and he'll push it out to his audience as well. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Awesome. So then we're going to shoot for April the 15th yeah, and we will try to do this in person is what I'm hearing. Right. Cause that's, that's when we get the full effect, right? Well, if not, I guess you can have all the, the audience members on a zoom meeting like this. That would probably be a little crazy. <laughs> yeah. So, so what we do Mr. Chairman, is, is on the 15th of April, we would do it via a webinar. Now, when we do it in a webinar, we, we use a, a webinar that the speakers are the ones that can are be able to, to communicate. Everyone else is automatically muted. They'll be able to chime in along those lines just to be able to, to control that. Um, and, 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 and Mr. Rajona, we will work 
with you on giving us direction which tool to use. We, we, we have several formats. Uh, the one that we would do in person would be down the line. Once everybody's more comfortable to, uh, to meet, whether it's in the fall or, or, or along those lines, we would then bring you uh, folks. Because at those, what we like to do is uh, we would go to City Hall, you give us an update, we get on a bus, and we go to the different parts of the community and then go have some lunch. Uh, that's in person, but we can't do that now. Uh, but, but we definitely can at least want to do, do them in, in online. Awesome. Very good. Any questions about any of the board members? I'm sorry, we I couldn't hear that. No, no questions. I mean, I I think it's a great idea, and can't wait to get started. Uh, both both uh, for the meantime, because of the situation, both virtually and definitely in person. You know, once we're able to and allowed. But a uh, great idea, and I'm, I'm all for it. Mr. Garza, do you have any comments or questions? No. Sir. Tell him I'm on my phone so I can't answer him if somebody I, can tell him. Blackie, I think what he's trying to tell you is to mute your mute your mic while you're not speaking because we're getting a well, lot of I, I, it is on it is on mute. My, it says here mic muted on my side. Well, we hear you right now, so it's not muted. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, because I hit it. Hold on, watch. I'm gonna, I'm gonna mute it again. No, no, okay. my, my, my just did it. We, he can control it from here. Yeah. There you go. Okay. That got better. How's that? Yes, much better. Okay. Yeah, just keep it on mute until, until you need to say something, then you turn it on. Appreciate that. Dixon, yeah. times already. But yeah. Well, I appreciate a, the time, Mr. Contreras and Maggie. Was that your name? Marie. Marie. Thank you, Marie. Marie Garcia. Marie Garcia. We appreciate your time as well, and we look forward to doing this webinar with you guys. Thank you, and uh, we'll work with you, Ben, and, and we can kind of give you a sense of what, what's worked and wasn't, what hasn't worked, so that way you can have a good uh, message. Uh, April 15th this year is not tax day because they moved it two months, uh, so, so don't worry about tax day. Uh, really? and, That's hot off the press. I didn't know that. Yeah. I was already worrying. Good. Yeah, yeah. As the, uh, so so uh, uh, and you guys can speak on the new project next to the HB. You can talk about folks about the church that it's open, you know, things like that of that nature. People like to hear that. Okay. We'll do. Thank awesome. you so much, sir. Awesome. Very, thank thank you. Okay. Appreciate your time, guys. Have a good evening. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Moving on, Mr. Uh, Chairman, uh, I wanted to go through the uh, monthly sales report. Uh, just real quick on that. I don't know if you had a chance to look at it, uh, but just wanted to say that uh, we're doing very healthy when it comes to that as far as the collections, even though the last month was a little bit kind of like shaky. We had a 0.43% increase in last year to this year. However, as far as the total, the last, uh, what is it, six months, uh, we've been very fortunate There's enough to have a good cushion on that. So uh, totally, I mean, total over the uh, the tax uh, revenue that had come in, it's about one ninety five thousand. So, I'm doing so we're doing real good as far as sales yep. tax. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm on it. I'm on Zoom. Blackie, can you Zoom? Blackie. Can you uh, mute? It? Blackie, mute we it. can hear you. We can hear you. Thank you. I'm sorry, Ben. Go ahead. That's okay, sir. And if you look at the uh, column one. On where it says the March estimate, the April is at 366.167. That was our estimated uh, sales tax that, that was to be coming in. But right. if you look in the third column, we're already at 90, negative 96.68. What that means is that that's, that's how much more money we need to be even. So that's only in a short period of, of uh, one, two, three, four, five months. So we, we got another seven months, and I'm very confident that these numbers are, are going to be increasing instead of decreasing. As you know, what happened last week, uh, last week, uh, pretty much everything was out of the store. So that's going to be a good uh, sales tax coming back to the city and the EDC for sure. What was the impact on that? Uh, not that we want something like this to happen again, but, you know, this is just a trend that is taking place. So I don't know if you have any questions for me on that uh, sales tax. This is just a sales tax that comes directly from the controller's office. We don't manipulate any of this. This is coming straight from there. The only comment I have on that on that uh, 
chart that you gave us, Mr. Arjona, it said on the increase from September of prior year, on the very first one, it says negative 96. That, that didn't make sense to me. Am I reading that wrong? Right. Ne this is an accounting type of uh, the way they read it. So when it comes to a positive, that, that's when you're actually even. So it, just think about it as revenue. You forecast a, a million dollar revenue and you're barely at uh, half a million, so you still have the negative revenue come in. So this is a revenue okay. that is on the negative. It doesn't mean that it's okay. negative. It means that that's the forecasted. Okay. Yeah. Anybody else have any comments or questions from Mr. Arjona on the tax collections? Okay. Then we can move on to the next item, Mr. Arjona. Yes, sir. The other one, uh, item two, uh, we have that the free COVID-19 safety-related training. Uh, reached out to Workforce Solutions as they were setting up this, uh, these flyers. And I pretty much asked them, what was this for? So they sent us this flyer. This flyer has already been on the EDC website as well as on the city side for at least a month, month and a half. Uh, we had a, a member of the business community calling and reaching out to see what this was about. And I pretty much told them this is a, a what it says are eligibility criteria, which is any small business, 300 or less employees is eligible for this here. This is just a free training. Uh, and, and it's a, it's a win-win for the business owner. It's something that is free to them, uh, having to use the computers and, and, and a lot of stuff like uh, information technology disaster recovery is there, customer service, uh, emotional well-being and stress management is one, one of those, and running great virtual meetings. So those are some of the topics that are included in that uh, workforce solutions uh, free training, COVID-19. So hopefully some of these businesses can take advantage of this free training. I think it's very educational for not only them but also us that uh, we're looking at, uh, we, we treat the seed in the EDC as a business. So just an FYI on that, uh, that the, uh, it, it is available for any business owner less than 300 employees. Awesome. And these are done uh, via video or oh, what, Ben, or they come to your business? V video? Okay. Cool. And again, it's free Very to good. the public. There's no charge, so that's the beauty of it. Item number three, where we have the EDC property correction deed. I spoke to Mr. Guajardo some, and uh, I, I know that uh, we brought this property, I want to say a couple of meetings ago. This is a, me this is a property that sits uh, right behind Risica uh, uh, and Sons uh, Glass Company, whatever, which is off of First Street. And uh, after looking at the deeds, the way they were created, there was a couple of them. And I submitted an word to Mr. Guajardo for his review, as he's an expert in doing this. So he said, you know what, this is a little bit complicated. It's a little bit uh, confusing the way that they were, I guess, uh, deeded. And uh, so he recommended for me to send it out so that it'll be corrected. However, one of the things that we're looking at, if you look at the, uh, the correction deed at the very back, at the very end, it says no title tax or survey examination was requested. So one of the things he was talking to me about that was, how do we know that this is actually the corrected deed? So what we did was, uh, we uh, asked our engineer, the one that we have uh, with ADC, Mr. Javier Hinojosa, to go over and survey the property. As a matter of fact, he, I, I spoke to him the day after, and he said he was going to take care of that. Uh, so I'm assuming he's already working on that. So that just to make sure that the points that are here on the corrected, uh, corrected deed matches what, what he's going to find. Now, if they're different, Mr. Guajardo and members of the board, uh, we're going to have to send them back to Edwards Abstract so that they can do the correction deed on, on, the, on this paperwork so they didn't, it'll be finalized yes and, and just so you know this correction deed uh, Mr. Guajardo and members of the board did not cost us a single penny from the Metaverse abstract okay so Mr. Arjona we back from Javier Hinojosa you know, as a matter of fact I called them yesterday day before yesterday uh, yesterday and uh, we were talking about the uh, the other property and I missed asking him about the uh, the survey we were talking about the other property across the uh, on the front edge, on the north side of it. And uh, I, I completely forgot to, to ask him about this. And I called him this, this afternoon and he didn't answer. He was, I'm assuming he's busy. He'll probably later. Okay, so I, so I guess really all we want from him is to confirm that the meets and bounds that are being indicated on this correction deed are accurate. And if they are, then this deed is ready to record. Yes, sir. We don't want to just compound the problem. If they're wrong again, then we're going to have another problem on top of the other one. Right. You know, that's, that was the whole purpose. Right. Okay, very good. Thank you. So we uh, touched up on the commercial virtual tour. So update on Taco Palenque is uh, I overheard Mr. 
Guajardo speaking to Mr. Contreras as far as the Taco Palenque, it is moving up pretty fast. We were supposed to open up on the 5th, which is in a couple of days. However, there was a little hiccup with the FTC, which is the fire department connection. They had to be relocated. Uh, they're working on it as we speak. So we're hoping that by the end of the week that will be completed. And that they did say very conservative was that they were gonna do the grand opening hopefully by the middle of April. But I know speaking to Craig, which is a developer, uh, he said it'll, it'll be sooner than that. So I'm, I'm, I'm hoping and aiming that right before the end of the month, we can have that grand opening or even the ribbon cutting for Taco Palenque. Awesome. So late March or early April for the grand yes, opening. Is what, that what I heard? Yes. And as a matter of fact, there were some, some hurdles that we had to cross over. The staff was very helpful in uh, expediting some of the TxDOT permits. And uh, not, not that we expedited it, but we spoke to TxDOT. Uh, and also the gas permits, the, the, the uh, transformer that was supposed to be installed it was already, it, it, they installed it. So our staff is really working very hard and diligently working with Taco Palenque as well. Very good. And that's uh, that's what I have for director's report, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Okay. Then uh, we will move on to our next item. Item six will be discussion action on vision for downtown revitalization. Yes, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, I know that uh, about maybe three meetings ago, we talked about the downtown revitalization and we had some uh, issues with the uh, technology here as far as the, uh, the virtual uh, meeting. And, uh, but I brought it back uh, as I was speaking to Mr. Guajardo, it's like, if we're gonna bring this back over. I wonder this, because what is it that, that you as, as, a, as a committee, as a board would like to see with the downtown revitalization? Downtown revitalization covers so many different aspects of it that is not necessarily just uh, fixing the street or fixing the roads, but it covers the roads, infrastructure, facades of the buildings, uh, many different components. One of the things that we're discussing is, and the other one is that the biggest factor is the funding. How do we get the funding? Uh, are we gonna do a turnkey? Do we do it in phases? So one of the things is, do we meet up on a, as a workshop to discuss the planning? What is the vision? What is the implementation, even deployment? How do we deploy it? and what steps do we take for us to get there. Uh, so there's gonna be several several phases on downtown revitalization. So I think uh, my opinion, my recommendation is that maybe what we need to do is hold a workshop so that we can all be together and start brainstorming. What is it that we wanna see first? Do we plan on that first so that we can actually bring in the, the architects so that we can have a plan in, in place already before we bring them in? And so when we bring these architects, we can dialogue with them. This is, this is what the plan is, this is what the vision is, and this is what we're gonna get to. Uh, and then obviously later, once we hire the architect, that he can come back and say, this is how much it's gonna cost you. So that we can make, I mean, this is toward the tail end of it, of the uh, fiscal year, even though we're still in, barely in March, to us it's already mid-year. So that'll give us plenty of time to plan ahead so that we can either do the planning first, the vision where we're gonna be at, and then the implementation deployment so that we can come up with the funding, uh, whether it's gonna be, like I said, several phases, or we'll take it a phase at a time. So at the end of the day, we can all be on the same page and we know what is it that we wanna accomplish. Uh, as I was speaking to Mr. Guajardo last week, on the city side, the intent is to connect the city hall, the new one, all the way to the Basilica, whether with pavers, but make a connection to it. And then maybe on the ADC side, we can come in and improve the other stuff such as the landscaping, uh, do a traffic, uh, slow down the traffic, maybe instead of two lanes, maybe make it a one lane with a medium possibly. Uh, these are just ideas that him and I were bouncing back and forth. So this is why the, the, the planning or, or the uh, workshop is very important before we actually tackle into getting the downtown revitalization as the architects. Well, I think that we need a workshop and I think that would be the first step and moving in the right direction. And uh, based on that, you know, we get input from everybody and, and start to see everybody's ideas and put it together. I don't think it's hard because I do see everybody being on the same page and wanting the same thing. Uh, how do we get there? And I think that's the very first step. After we hit that step, we'll be get a better picture of how to uh, approach it and how to, you know, manage it after that. But definitely in agreement that we do need a workshop, a joint uh, workshop, the EDC and the city, 
that way we can you know better evaluate this we're all on the same page then we can let the act the real professionals handle it after they know our vision and, and after speaking with the staff uh was it last week if i'm not mistaken we we came up with several ideas and one of them was maybe the possibility of visiting another city that has already gone through these headaches what did they do how did they fix it what did they encounter uh what were the hard knocks on this so some cities such as Fredericksburg is one of them they did a beautiful downtown revitalization along with green those are the only two that that i know of that i visited before at a different city for that purpose but there's there's other there there, there are different cities that uh, they have gone through the downtown revitalization that, that worked out great uh then maybe we can go over and, and visit with them or visit the little cities or big cities to see what is it that they did that we can maybe come over and mimic here with the city of san juan so that's that was just an idea that we're bouncing back and forth at the uh with the staff at the adc uh it was a very productive meeting uh, we had so many different ideas obviously but uh, at the end of the day the purpose is the same thing downtown revitalization to make it look nicer more attractive so as we're driving either way on the frontage, we can see the lights, we can see the nice looking corridor that it's all that downtown revitalization. So just an idea. When, what's the soonest time that we time frame that we can get together for a workshop? Can you can you we can we can do it at set that out to the individuals with the board the commission and to the EDC? To the city and EDC? Both join? Well I mean, I would assume that, that that we'd want it together. Okay. We can, or, or you know, invite the the board members of the the EDC sure. to get it together. But the sooner the better. We can get you know we can get started. You let us know uh, whether you want to have another regular meeting. You want to have, have a joint uh, uh, workshop, and then after the workshop, we can have the, the EDC meeting or vice versa. I guess after you can reach out to everybody, yeah. you can get a better picture. Which it depends because if we're having a, a, a workshop, it may take longer than expected than right. that meeting. So correct. Right. We might have to have two different meetings. Right. Two different. Dates. Dates, dates, yeah. Okay. We can do that as well. Because I think uh, by brainstorming, I think uh, everybody will bring anything to the table. I think Mr. Garza would be an asset because I think he, they had that vision a while back. And maybe he's got some input of other stuff that he's implemented or he was actually had in mind. So I think that's going to be very interesting. And I think it's going to take longer than just to, just uh, that. Well, actually, that, that would be enough time, I believe, for the uh, – for the workshop, but I don't think it would be enough for to have a meeting right after that. Right. No, no, I, I totally agree. Okay. I totally agree. It, it, it'll it'll take any anywhere between a couple of hours to maybe even four hours. Right, right. But that'll be a, a perfect time so so that, like you said, we can start brainstorming and see what is it that you all want to see accomplished in this downtown revitalization. And we can we can even uh, dig and 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 see what what transpired back in what's it 2005 2010. Yes, sir. Yes. Council members back then. Mm -hmm. And see what was the, uh, maybe the vision at that point. Was it only infrastructure improvements? Because that's, that's all I can see. Uh, I've been looking for some uh, maybe designs or renderings of downtown revitalization. I can't find anything. The only thing that I, could, I was able to find was infrastructure improvements. Yeah, and that's the one thing. I look at also infrastructural uh, improvements because before we go on to beautifying, beautifying the area, we need to look at the flooding area, you know, it usually floods in those general areas that we're talking about. I think that's going to be very interesting. Right. And one of the things, if I may, though, is that when we have this other workshop, I like to bring the utilities uh, uh, along with the sanitation and maybe the planning so that uh, they're much better versed in, into the infrastructure that is currently in downtown and they can let us know exactly what is it that is under. And if there's any improvements that, that need to be done, maybe discuss them at that point so that we can get a, a, a figure in our mind already saying that it's going to cost us so much besides anything and everything else. Uh, yeah, it's a, I think it's a bigger bigger uh, operation than just the EDC right. and the city. I think those those uh, entities that you devise, yes. I think they'll be very crucial in our in our planning because right. they know exactly what exactly we need underneath right. the ground. Because one of the things we need to look into by having this is we need to bring over the master plan that we currently have and see have we met the master plan. Is that do we are, are we in part with it? I know that south of the city hall we haven't done that and that's one of the things we're actually currently working as we speak because of that development but uh, going north those are one of the things that is it a 12 inch line 14 inch line or six or is it appropriate to what we want to do the last thing we want is we're going to fix something and then rip it apart as well again i guess it's going to be very vital for the next 18 months 24 some 20 months right that we're going to have awesome. for the new city hall i think it's going to be very vital to have this meeting and so we can actually uh, do something also in conjunction with it Mr. Arona. 
Uh, from what I understand, back in, I believe, 2010, and there was a phase that we did uh, downtown revitalization, and that uh, what was actually done out there was repair all the, all the lines, the water lines. I believe they repaired several lines that were behind in, in, within the area of the downtown. I think that was the very first phase, I believe. I, I remember that uh, replacing, uh, not, not, not that I was here, but re that it was some replacement of infrastructure lines and also uh, repaving of streets. Correct. Uh, I just don't know if anything going north as far as water lines have those been replaced. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that we need to look into. Really, my understanding is when the expressway where uh, actually the, the hospital is, okay. that was, used to belong to Miss uh, Rosa Valencia, and that line got looped around, if I'm mistaken. A, a, much big, the, a big line, line got looped yeah. around. And uh, the, most, the majority of the lines behind the old bars mm -hmm. right now, which is uh, maybe where uh, uh, Aguileras is, there's uh, most of those lines got replaced uh, back good. in 2010. And see, that, that's why I think it's crucial to so what I was going to say. They can tell us, you know, what it's Well, Mr. Garza has experience, and he's also, uh, at the time, they had already, you know, started with the idea of the, of the downtown revitalization. So that's very vital. And I do agree that with Mr. Sanchez, I mean, getting our utilities and our you know, Mr. Garza and you guys is that, that that know about that profession can really tie into that to that meeting that we're going to have. After that, I think everything would be kind of flow. All into when we get everybody's expertise there. Yes. Okay. We should for if, if you don't mind, uh, we should for the next couple of weeks maybe have a workshop, even if it's just a brainstorming, the initial first brainstorming of downtown revitalization, and then we can have many several, you know, others to to follow. Okay. Mr. Arjona, I was having a lot of difficulty the audio as we've experienced in the past on Zoom and we got some of the same. But oh, I think what I was hearing that everybody's in agreement that a workshop is is probably what we what we'd like to do first, right? So we could organize our thoughts and our plans, come up with what we want to do, and then we can after that, proceed with hiring an architect to help yes. us with what we want to do, right? right. That, was that the consensus of the commission that's there right now, yeah. Mr. Villegas, right. Mr. Sanchez? Yes, yes sir. sir. Yeah. Okay, very good. And I would say as soon as possible, Ben, I don't know if you guys decided on a date there. Again, it was hard to hear, but when, when, as soon as you can do it, and it would make sense to do it in combination with the city commission as well so that we can all be on the same page, if possible. Definitely. Or, or even if you don't have the the commission available, I mean, we've got some commissioners on this board, so I think that's good. It, you know, works out even if you can't get some of the other ones to show up, right? But but as soon as we can do it, I think would be good. Perfect. Okay. Very good. Uh, what, what's our next item? No more discussion. Any other comments, questions? Israel, Mr. Blackie, you got any comments about that? No, sir, I should not. Okay. Then we'll go on to item number eight, our consent agenda. We've got six sets of minutes. We've got uh, March 17, 2020, April 21, 2020, May 5th, 2020, May 19, 2020, August the 4th, 2020, and September the 15th, 2020 uh, to approve. Have you all had an opportunity to review those minutes? Yes, sir. Uh, any concerns or comments or changes to them? I found one typo. I'm just thumbing through them on uh, the minutes from May the 5th, uh, page 6 of 8. In the middle there where I'm quoted as speaking, it says the EDC gave it a stable at it, but... I think we meant to say stab, a stab at it. Can, so I saw that, that, I saw that, and I don't know if anybody else found anything else that needs to be corrected. If, if not, I'll entertain a motion to um, go ahead and accept these minutes as submitted for approval. So move. Second. Got a motion and a second to accept these minutes uh, as submitted with that change that I just uh, made. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Next item is our executive session. Uh, did we get a link? I did not see one from Mr. Rico. Did he send it out to us before we 
go into there. Is he there with you guys, Ben? I am. I did not send one out this time. I can send it out really quickly, though. I didn't hear that. What What was it? The emails were sent? I'm going to send it to you right now, sir. Yeah, I, I didn't get a chance to do so, but I'll send them out in about five minutes. Okay. So we won't be able to log on until we receive those, right, for the executive session? Oh, yes. I'll resend the same email I sent before. Anything else? If not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I shall move. Thank you. Got a motion. Adjourn and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 This meeting is now adjourned. Thank you, Make gentlemen. Sure you have a good evening, sir. Thank you.